Today I'm joined by Nicoleks Limited, ASX Code NKL, Managing Director, Mr. Matt Gorsey, and Exploration Manager, Tony Donaghy. Guys, thanks for your time. Thanks, Dave. Now, Nicolex, newly listed company, has secured a strategic foothold in the prolific Albany Fraser Belt in WA. Importantly, the company has commenced exploration activities, recently completing a maiden first pass diamond drill program of more than 2,400 metres, testing five targets at the Berenup project. Drilling successfully encountered massive sulphides at the Fire Dragon nickel target and disseminated sulphides at the Silver Dragon nickel target. Matt, Firstly, what was the drilling designed to test and what did the results tell you about these targets? Yeah, look, I mean, we undertook a ground EM survey across uh, five odd targets uh, within the Piranup project, being Fire Dragon, FD2, 4 um, and FD1. Um, at Silver Dragon, we'd had a fairly good data set um, to follow up uh, on with respect to diamond dr uh, drilling. Um, but primarily on the basis of the grant that we got from the West Australian Government for, for the diamond drilling program was to test any potential extensions of the known uh, massive sulphides from previous drilling um, at Fire Dragon. And you know, effectively we've uh, intersected massive sulphides again at Fire Dragon, um, disseminated sulphides at Silver Dragon, and uh, we're clearly looking forward to downhole EM and assays and then uh, structural and geological interpretation to uh, be able to constrain targets for the next round of drilling. Tony, on a specific basis, what 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 were the results of Fire Dragon? What what did you see, and uh, and what excited you? Well, we intersected the right rock types. We were getting various flavours of uh, mafic uh, lithologies, such as gabbros, Luca gabbros. Um, Textures in the rocks were indicative that uh, these rocks have been crustally contaminated. And also we hit sulphides in the Gabbro, and particularly at the, the fourth hole in KL um, DD0004, we hit uh, the half a metre of massive sulphide and also disseminated and patchy textures of sulphide within the Gabbro rock itself. So now we're waiting on the assay results to see uh, what flavour of geochemistry we get back on those. and potentially also, um, not potentially, but the, the borehole EM on those holes and uh, see if we light up any conductors off hole that coincide with what we intersected in the hole. And in terms of the next steps for Fire Dragon and Silver Dragon, what, what's the plans there? Yeah, look, I mean, uh, I, I guess strategically, we will clearly await um, downhole EM and assays undertake structural geological evaluation but it but it's likely um once that's done would undertake another round of, uh, of drilling particularly at fire dragon um and, and possibly at silver dragon um uh, likely be rc drilling um but yeah it, it's it's yet to be fully decided and clearly exploration is an iterative process um and needs to be results driven um so we'll complete this campaign um sit down and, and go through the data sets and, and decide on what the next round of program is but it's likely another round of drilling um, and yeah tony you can you can feel free to expand on that well in addition to um, following up on the results that we've generated in this round of drilling as well there's also the gold exploration work on the tenements uh, we've have a program of work already in place uh, we're planning ip search geophysical surveys and so part of the follow-up work will be also to follow up on the gold targeting and uh, potentially move straight into diamond drilling on some of those targets um, once we get the drill on site as well. You touched on the gold target there at Black Dragon. Tony, what is the plan there? Well, at Black Dragon, um, we have a, a something like a 10 to 12 kilometre trend of anomalous soil geochemistry, grab samples, previous auger and RC drilling. Uh, we've been compiling the data in, in 3D space uh, and, and modelling the data and, and looking at some of the better intersections that was done in historic drilling and where the gaps are in that data where we could potentially, you know, potentially add a, a great deal more uh, favourable information and good exploration by following up on those results. And also, as I said, doing ground geophysics, uh, IP survey in particular, to try and highlight where there's potential chargeability anomalies that these gold deposits could be associated with. And the business is well known for its project generation capabilities. These projects themselves came out of, of the work that you did to generate these projects prior to listing. Do you have any other project generation plans and, and how do they evolve? 
Yeah, look, I mean, we've built a, a proprietary nickel prospectivity database uh, in conjunction with, uh, you know, three PhD geologists, uh, which effectively is uh, collecting all the geochem, geophysical, geological data across, firstly, uh, the eastern gold fields, <clears throat> which is clearly one of the most prolific nickel um, fields in, in the world, um, and then also the emerging southwest Yulgarn, um, which, you know, clearly has had some amazing discoveries, including Julemar. Um, so that's guiding us in terms of what areas we really need to target, uh, focus on, and uh, and to potentially either either peg um, ground or otherwise deal on on ground um, that that may be available uh, that's been explored by um, either gold players or other mineral players. Um, so that's guiding us. Um, for project generation. We've always said that we have a budget for that. We've always said that we're keen to expand into other districts, but as we said in the prospectus, and as we've always said, the first port of call is to run a systematic uh, drilling and exploration program at Buren up, out in the Albany Fraser built its first cab off the rank. And, you know, we've only been listed for, for six months or so, and um, we're now ready to move into project generation mode as well. So there's some outstanding opportunities out there. Um, that may come into the fold in due course that um, yeah, we're, we're really, really excited about. So Matt, I have to deal a little bit with the elephant in the room. Off the back of the results, you did see a bit of a sell-off. What do you put that down to? Um, and, and is there a message for shareholders or, a, or, a, or something that the market needs to know or maybe it's missed? Yeah, look, absolutely. I mean, as a management team and a board, we're reasonably comfortable with the program. Um, it's made in first pass program of only six holes across five targets. Um, market expectations or, or some portions of the market clearly expect, um, you know, discovery hole on your on your first program. It, it rarely if ever happens. Um, but what we've done is collected a, a, an exceptional amount of data to be able to plan the next program. Um, I always think about the sand fire discovery and uh, you know, one of the founders of Sandfire is one of our shareholders, and even he said the other day, um, with the discovery hole at Degrusso was about the fourth priority target in line. Um, so you, you do have to be systematic in this process, and um, it was similar at Nova, which uh, which Tony can probably refer to. Yeah, the, the the history of the Nova discovery is, is it was the the twenty third hole in the program, and they were down to brass knuckles in the in the bank. Uh, it was that that hole was make it or break it for them. So. It's, this exploration is a long haul process. It's systematic. You collect the evidence, you follow the evidence where it leads you. And I, I think importantly uh, for, for our register, the top 10 are uh, more than intact. In fact, they've been supporting the stock and you know some of the some of the holders just outside of that top 10 have, have probably tipped a little bit out and affected the stock, but um, it's still tight. Um, it's still supportive. And, you know, obviously in the nickel industry, any sniff of, uh, of good grades of nickel in the right geological structures can can move the stock back up to you know 50 60 70 cents which is still only a sort of a 30 40 mil market cap company um, and we know nickel can fly once you've run a systematic program and, and discovered something um, of uh, of interest as you say the bearing up project is exciting with a number of uh, number of targets to be tested um, and a lot of work being done and to be done so strong news flow out of those projects a quality technical team well funded. Um, but with an eye on new projects, should they, they fit the criteria? Exciting times ahead for Nickel X Limited. Guys, thanks for your time. Thank you, thanks, Dave. Dave.